Several of my friends, Jack, Ted, and Riss, wanted to know more about how I use my Oyama Turbo Convection Oven. So that's what this video is all about. And what I'm going to do is walk you through a typical meal that I produce with this oven. Now, this happens to be the 12 liter version. It does come with a, a lower grill and an upper grill. And I'll show you how I use those with uh, my typical meal. It does come with a little device that allows you to pull the grills out without burning yourself. And then it does come with a stand for the lid. So this is going to be how I use the Oyama Turbo Convection Oven. For those of you who are, or who are already familiar with my YouTube channel, you know that I do an awful lot of videos relative to power tools. And when I do, I all, one of the first things I always talk about is power. Now you notice the size of the cord. It's a rather thick cord and I plug it directly into the wall. So with the Oyama um, uh, convection oven, you need to make sure it's plugged directly into the wall and you're not using an extension cord because it's probably not going to allow you to draw the power that you need to run this oven correctly. Normally we wouldn't talk about cleanup until the very end, but I'm going to talk about it first off. And the reason I say that is if you prepare correctly, it makes cleanup a lot easier. So I've taken 12 inch wide aluminum foil. And as you can see here, I've shaped it over the, the bowl, which I've turned upside down and made the aluminum foil into a bowl shape. So when I flip it over, it sits down inside nice and neat and catches all the juices and everything that comes off the food while it's cooking. So when I'm done, all I have to do is roll it up and throw it out. And I have very little cleaning of the bowl itself when I'm done. Now I've turned the bowl right side up and I've taken that bowl shaped piece of aluminum foil. I've set it down inside and later on you're going to see I set the grills down inside that. And that makes my uh, cleanup an awful lot easier. This is the meal that I'm going to be preparing this time. Uh, I've got five ears of uh, these short little pieces of corn. I've got several pieces of uh, salmon. Now I've coated them with a little bit of olive oil so the uh, seasoning stays on better. And then I also have two boneless skinless chicken breasts. Now for seasoning I like the McCormick's Grill Mates. For the uh, salmon I use Montreal steak. And for the uh, fish I use the uh, smokehouse maple. So I'm going to show you how I set this up in the convection oven here in just a moment. I like to cook in two layers and what I like to do is put the items that I think are going to take the longest to cook down in the bottom. So you see I've taken the chicken breasts and the five pieces of corn and I put them in the bottom. I don't put any kind of coating on that little grill there. I just take it as it is and it's really not that difficult to clean. So this is my bottom layer. Now when it comes to taking things out, when I take the salmon out, I pretty much take the corn out at the same time and let the chicken go just a little bit longer. And I'll show you those times as this is cooking. Now I put the second grill in and of course I put the salmon on top. And as you'll notice there's additional room on the grill for more pieces of chicken or other vegetables. Uh, perhaps some potatoes or something like that. The only consideration is if you're putting more on the top is it sits below the level of the top of the grill because you don't want to have it interfere with the heating coil from the top that sits down uh, on the unit itself. So let's take a look at the timing and the temperature. For this meal I'm going to cook it for about 30 minutes to begin with at uh, 392 degrees. Now there's a scale on the back there that gives you an idea of what you should do for each type of food. Well, I'm doing a combination of fish and corn and chicken in here. And so I'm using this as a gauge. I will pull the salmon and the corn out well before the chicken is done. And one of the things that I really like about this convection oven is I can see things as they're cooking. So if it looks like it's done, I can pull it out and I don't have to open and close it like some of the other closed and uh, metal convection ovens. So I really like this uh, glass container so I can monitor the food as it's uh, cooking. So let's get this started and we'll watch it as it goes. We're about five minutes into the cooking cycle and I'm going to come in here as close as I can get. And even though all this is frozen, the fish, the chicken, and the corn, 
as you can see it's already starting to show that it's cooked and I'll probably end up pulling out this uh, smaller piece first because I know it's going to cook a lot faster but again that's one of the things that I like about this uh, convection oven is that I can see things as they are progressing in the cooking cycle. We're about 10 or 12 minutes into the cooking cycle and I'm going to come in a little bit closer here and you can see how that's really starting to to go from the pink it was earlier to a lot browner and then you got this uh, little guy over here lighting's not real good but you can see he's starting to get uh, brown as well and of course the one on the back's about the same size so I'm not going to take a look at that but you can see the difference 10 to 12 minutes mm, close to 15 minutes and it's already starting to look like it's uh, pretty well done I'm going to open this up a little bit and uh, we'll take a look and see if it's ready to come out we're about 15 minutes into the cooking cycle. Let's open this up and take a look. So I'm going to set the lid over here on the stand. Let me see if this looks like it's ready to come out. It is pretty close. I think like another four or five minutes. This guy by itself is ready to come out. I'm going to take him out right now and set him over here. Uh, let's see. Yes, he's ready. I'm going to give these two. Let's look at this one. This one still has a ways to go. So let's give these guys, let's give them about 10 more minutes. One of the things that helps me gauge whether the salmon is ready to come out or not is how crispy those edges look. And as you can see, it's starting to get crispy along that edge. And that tells me it's getting pretty close. So we're going to give it a few more minutes and we'll come back and open this up and take these guys out. I think this salmon's about ready to come out, so let's set the lid on the stand over here. And let's get in here, use my little spatula to take it out. And I'll set this over on the cutting board. <clears throat> this guy looks like he's ready too. And you notice there's not a lot of sticking on the uh, grill, which I really like. And then, where is my little grabber? It's right here. So in order to prevent yourself from being burned, they provide this little device for grabbing the grill. As you see right there, it lifts it right out so you don't end up touching the sides or having to put any kind of mitts on in order to get the uh, grill out. So the corn looks like it's about ready to come out. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's ready. So let's get the corn out of here. And set these guys over here on the cutting board. And let's take a look at the chicken. I think this chicken needs a little bit more like this. And then I'm going to cut it open. I'm going to give it a few more minutes here. And then I'll show you what I do with the chicken. I'm going to take the chicken out of the uh, convection oven and show you what I do next. So I'm going to take the lid off and set it in the stand. And then I'm going to get the first piece and set it over here. That's looking good. And the second piece. That one stuck a little bit to the, to the uh, deal. Okay. So what I like to do with these guys is I like to make sure they're cooked inside thoroughly and what you see is if you can see that there on camera there's an awful lot of pink in there so I like to accelerate the cooking process so I'll cut these open and kind of like I'm not gonna call it fillet but kinda of like that and then what I'll do is put them back in for a little bit longer and they'll cook a little bit faster see how pink that is I could let them cook like they are but I like to season these a little bit further or more on the sides. So what I do at this point is, let's get that guy out. So what I do at this point is, I'll take my smokehouse maple that I've been using, and I'll spread it open and put a little bit more on it because I like an awful lot of the seasoning. seasoning. And I get it more on there. I'll get more on it on the uh, those sides. And then what I do is I put it back in and cook a little bit longer till I see that that pinkness is gone. So that's the next step in this uh, cooking cycle. And that makes these a little bit tender. It also makes them uh, cook a little bit faster. 
So I've taken the chicken and uh, put it back into the convection oven and you can see it's uh, still pink. I'm going to give it about another 10 or 12 minutes and see how it goes. Uh, but what I like is I can see when it's cooking and see when it's ready and pull it out at the appropriate time rather than trying to guess simply by the timer. And you notice too if you can see it down there that aluminum foil is already starting to capture some of the juices that have come out of the meat uh, so far. It makes it an awful lot easier to, to clean up. So I finally taken the chicken out. It took like uh, five to six more minutes to finish off. So I did the entire meal in somewhere between 35 and 40 minutes. And as I shared with you earlier, the aluminum foil did a very, very good job at uh, collecting the juices uh, from this uh, turbo convection oven. So Jack, Ted, Riss, I hope this has given you some insights into uh, how I cook meals in my turbo convection oven. And uh, if you like this video, please press like. And for those of you who are not already subscribers, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And as always, good luck with your cooking. Thank you.